Hey everybody. So today we are going to get ready to treat for varroa mites. We are quickly moving into fall and it is time to make sure that my hives can be as healthy as they possibly can be going into winter to make sure that these bees have every chance of survival that I can help with. So I will be treating all three hives with Formic Pro. Um, after my research, that's what I decided I was going to use. Uh, you can use it with the Honey Supers on, which is really nice. Um, I have already harvested, so it's not really a concern for me. I do have supers on my hives, just so the bees can have whatever honey is in there. I'm not going to take any more from them. They get whatever's in there for winter. So something to remember, whatever method you choose whether it's Formic Pro or HopGuard or Apigard, make sure that you take a picture of all the information on the bags that you receive. So like the back of my Formic Pro, it tells me what batch number it is and when it's going to expire. You have barcodes on the front, the address of the company on the front. Just take a picture of those. Um, so if you need it, you have it. Unfortunately, I have been through that situation where I needed it and I didn't have it and it made things pretty difficult trying to track everything down. So it's just good to keep records of everything. So I did pictures of everything before I brought it down here to the bee yard. I wrote on the bags, you know, I'm going to be treating my carniolan hive with this bag. The other, hi the other hives, I'll be using the other bag of my Formic Pro. And with whatever method you choose, just remember, this is a chemical, okay? You do not want to get it anywhere on you. It's, it's nasty stuff. It's poison, basically. Um, so I'm not going to be wearing my good gloves. Uh, most of the time I don't anyway. I really like these glove works. They are a lot thicker than your typical nitrate glove and they're textured so you know you can use them on a touch screen you can you know use them for anything i do i have gotten stung through them <laughs> so they're not bee proof that's for sure so i usually i usually put two or three pairs of these on just in case um but yeah, these are my favorite. You can find them on Amazon and I will add a link to these if you want to find them. There's a few different colors, which is kind of fun. But I, these were really reasonably priced. And like I said, they are thicker than normal gloves. So for me, they work pretty well out here. And since I will be using the Formic Pro, I can peel a layer of gloves off as I go and not touch my suit or anything else that, you know, might have contact with my kids, really. So just make sure that you're careful when you're handling the stuff. Don't inhale it, don't touch it, don't get it in your eyes, you know, treat it as you would any other chemical because it can be pretty nasty stuff. So I'm gonna get ready and then we will continue with this. So as we get ready to treat, a few things to remember is your bottom boards. I have screened bottom boards right now because it is still hot and I need to close those up. So I have my inserts that I am going to put in, came with it, came with the bottom boards. And I also have my sticky board. We're going to start with the Italian hive today. You don't have to use the sticky board. Um, I just want to see how many mites this treatment kills. So this is basically for my own knowledge. And for my kids to be able to see, you know, how healthy the hive is, how well we're doing, and all of that. So with your entrance, you want to make sure to keep it open. Don't put your entrance reducer on there or anything like that because they need that air. You're putting a chemical into your hive and they still need to 
be able to move some air around. So we're going to keep that open. No entrance reducer. You see these Italians coming in and out here. And I am going to go ahead and put my bottom board in there so that we close up the screen on the spaceboard. As we do this, so I'm just going to take the sticky part off of my sticky board and it'll just slide in there with everything else as I insert this piece. All right, so I got the bottom board installed there with its sticky board. And those ones are from Man Lake, in case you are on the hunt for some good ones. So I'm just going to open up this hive now and get started. Now these Formic Pro strips are going to need to go as close to your brood as possible because that's what it's going to do. Your fumes that come from the Formic Pro are going to go into the brood and kill those mites that might be capped in your brood. So I don't want to put it on top. I don't want to put it under my super or anything like that. It needs to go right in between my two deeps here. Of course, the fun part is getting them apart. They're busy, busy, as you can see. There they are. I'll just put my inner cover down because I don't need that right now. And try to get this, there it goes, top super off until they're not impressed with that. Okay. Oh, I have a broken frame. Look at that. So I've got some comb hanging down there, but that's okay. And I'm going to put that on my little table that I have here. So this is my first box. And one thing to remember is you do not want to feed your bees during this time. So I do have my internal hive feeders here, my frame feeders, but they are empty and I am not going to fill them up. They do not have a pollen patty at this time. I am not going to give them anything because again, you're going to have your fumes coming from this Formic Pro, and we don't want it to contaminate any of the food that the bees might be eating. So then, I'm going to try to get this next box off. Whoa. And one of the things you may be asking is why do we need to put that board in there to cover the screen bottom board if it's still hot? Well, you don't want the fumes from your Formic Pro just dropping down out of the bottom of your hive. Oh my goodness, that's heavy. So, I'll give you a look here. Everybody's doing such a good job. Let's see, we broke a few frames. And they have some honey hanging out there. This down again. I'm gonna get up close and personal with a few of the bees. <laughs> they like the phone at the moment. That's kind of fun. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my bag here of Formic Pro. And once I get that out of the package, I will show you what those look like. All right, so we have our Formic Pro opened up. It comes in a little package like this. It's technically two of them because that's what I bought. And there are two strips in here. Now with the Formic Pro, it needs to be temperature 
regulated, really. So, which is why it's taken me so long to do this. Your temperatures need to be between 50 and 83 degrees Fahrenheit in order to use this treatment. If it gets too hot within especially those first three days, uh, you risk killing off a lot of your bees, your queen, your brood, a lot of bad things. So I've been watching the weather to make sure that we're gonna have a good week with some lower temps finally. So I can go ahead and treat with my Formic Pro. So I'm gonna take this foil wrapper off. And you have two options for how to do this treatment as well. For me, I'm gonna do the two strips for 14 days, just cause I wanna knock it out. So I'm gonna take it out of the plastic. Make sure you bring a trash bag with you. <laughs> Always helps. Woo. It is wrapped in this little paper. Do not take it out of the paper. That kind of acts as a wick. So I'm going to go ahead and try to move some of them out of the way. They're not going to like it. I'm going to put one there, touching the end. I'm going to put the other one on this end. Come on. So they're not spaced too far apart, but I'm going to do both. You don't want to take a big whiff of that, that's for sure. So there's my first brood chamber. I have two pads of the Formic Pro on. I'm going to go ahead and put my other super, or my other deep back on. There we go and close it up but before I do that actually. Got some drone brood here. I'm gonna just scrape that out real quick because we don't need them. All right. And you can see, as soon as I put that on there, look at <laughs> how empty the top got. They're like, whoa, that's nasty stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this brood back, brood box back on and seal them up. Not too tight though. We still want some airflow. Try not to disturb your brood boxes too much. You don't need to really go hunting for the queen too much or anything like that. They're not going to like this too much, so just try to get it over with. I'm going to make sure that those are lined up. I'm going to put this super back on with the broken frame and all. Basically everything up here is theirs, and they get to do whatever they want. They can eat that. Alright. Look at that. Busy, busy. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on. My top cover. And I do have shims. I use wooden shims in my hives for the top cover because unfortunately this kind of hive does get a lot of condensation in it due to it being completely wax coated which i learned the hard way and that's a story for another day <laughs> so we're just gonna put that on i don't need to do any kind of ventilation for them other than no entrance reducer my hives are tilted a little bit so i'm gonna leave that there for the recommended amount of time with our formic pro and in the next video, we'll come back and we'll check our mite strip or mite sticky board on the bottom, see how it did. So make sure that you subscribe to our channel and follow along so that you can learn some more tips and tricks for taking care of your bees. See you again soon.